Hello and welcome to the special edition of Campus Debate. We are in Delhi College of Arts and Commerce today with the students of DCAC as it's called popularly uh, in Delhi lingo. Many thanks to all of you for joining us. Today the topic today that we have is the merits and demerits of online journalism versus print journalism. The more traditional form of journalism uh, where uh, newspapers are of course the majority form and the new age of uh, Twitterati and Facebook and digital and digitalization. We'll talk about that with the students of DCAC. <laughs> Uh, many thanks for all of you, uh, to all of you for joining us today. Uh, what we want to know from you, how many of you are on Twitter? That's a good majority of you, about 80, 70, 80 percent of you. Uh, if I could come to you first, uh, if I could come to you first, would you prefer reading a newspaper in the morning or would you like to get your updates, say, on Twitter or Facebook and, and why, why would that be? Well, I, I'm certainly going to go for a newspaper because it's going to give me an in-depth in -depth information and Twitter updates, well, I cannot every time call call them credible. Right, so that, that's that's your logic for it. Good enough, good enough logic. I think I agree with him. Uh, credibility is a big question mark in the digital world right now, the Twitter RT or Facebook or what have you. Uh, who agrees with him that credible sources of information are hardly seen on the digital universe? Who agrees? Not many of you agree. Why is that? Why don't you agree? Uh, because we've seen a lot of times in Facebook or let's say Twitter because we are the ones uploading. So we don't mind if, if we uh, hear it from the word of mouth, we just upload it. So it's not credible, it's not authentic. Would, would you say then that anything that goes into a newspaper and everything you read in a newspaper is for sure credible? Can you say that? Can anyone say that with maturity? No, we have seen instances wherein uh, it's not that credible, but then you have accountability. In social media or let's say Twitter, we don't have accountability. You cannot, account, you cannot have accountability. Right. I mean, I, I guess that's a fair enough point. We don't have accountability. In newspapers as such, we have some sort of accountability. Who prefers the digital universe to newspapers? Anyone? Yes. I want to come to uh, my friend over there. Um, please state your name before you start saying anything. And why do you think the, the digital world is more suited to your needs? Uh, my name is Tanya and uh, I think the digital world is more suited to my needs because I think all of us are always on the move. Like we live in a fast paced lifestyle I think and uh, the digital media, uh, w whatever is popular is obviously significant. So if we uh, get to know, uh, like a lot of times um, I get my news from Facebook or Twitter because I know it matters to people because if they're forwarding it, it does matter. A newspaper, I'm not saying the newspaper is not credible, but I'm saying what, what's important important will be there on the social media right yeah I think I think I, I see I see her point we're on the move it's a fast-paced world it's not like before the world has changed really uh, who agrees with my friend over there that because all of us are on the move right now it's a, an extremely fast-paced world it's an extremely competitive world nobody has time for anything these days uh, we use our thumbs more than I we use our brains who agrees with her that to our sort of lifestyle these days the, the Twitter RT or, or, the, or social media is more suited to our lifestyles. Anyone? Yes. What's your name? Uh, my name is Anshul. Uh, what I think is that uh, like while traveling uh, from one place to another, carrying a newspaper and re reading it gracefully is like pretty uh, difficult now. So, it's too much work. Yeah. Basically. So uh, handling or just a tablet or uh, in just your phone, you, if you are getting to read uh, all the news, then it's pretty comfortable for us. Right. Yeah. And, and, and you'd, you'd uh, forego that, the, the credibility question, because, uh, you know, it's easier for you? Are you willing to do that? No, see, uh, then again, the digital media has two parts. One is like, if I'm putting some news, then it's not that credible. But uh, suppose the, if a media house is putting something on the social network, then I can, assure, I can be assured that, okay, this is credible enough. Right. And, and mo yes, you have a point. Yeah, what's your name? Yeah, my name is Aditya and I would like to just add, when, when we talk about news and when we consume news via social media, I'm pretty sure most of us use it via credible sources like the current organizations, the current media organizations. We only refer to those when it comes to news. And all of them are online. Anyway. All of them now on, now online and now the print editions, the copy that they actually prepare for the newspapers, actually the same to same go online as well. So p people have started switching to online. Yes, it is less because the reach of internet is less in India. 
India. But still, the content which we are getting is pretty much the same as compared to the newspaper that we have. So not only we can read from one source, like from newspaper, we are if we are reading the Hindu, we are limited to the Hindu. We can uh, on online we can read from multiple sources. So we can gather from multiple sources and get to know more about the subject rather than just referring to one newspaper. I think that's a very good point. I think you should be applauded for that. I I, I just want to know from you guys uh, right now what he said. Uh, taking forward from that point, yes, I'll come to you. Uh, taking forward from that point, he said that he can cross check sources of information on online that you can't necessarily do if you're reading one newspaper. Uh, would you agree that cross checking has become easier because of the of, because of online world? Everyone agrees. Yes. Yes, everyone agrees. Yes, you had a point. I'm called to, I'll come to you right now. Uh, what's your name? State your name and, and, and take your point. Uh, my, my name is Nikhil. I'd like to add that everybody's talking about credibility. I'd like to tell that you know, even Twitter, uh, wherever accounts are, they, even if it's a Narendra Modi's account, it says that if, if the account is authorized. So whatever information that flows through it, you know, it, you, you just can't say it's not credible. Even I've seen you know shows, which there's a show on, on a popular uh, news channel, so, social networking, which you know all, reads all those Twitter's uh, handouts of these figures. So, so the very basic... Uh, Medium which was saying that credibility is not, not there in social media. I, we don't know the news is right or not. It's not true. Even how do you know whether the whatever the news is being reported on any news channel is true? It's not molded. I mean, in, with the way, because you consume it the way it comes to you. The editor does it. The editor does it, the cuttings. So the question of credibility is, I don't think, is any more, you know, relevant. Does anyone agree with them? The question of credibility is doesn't really come into the picture because we get news in newspapers as... Editors put it out. Do you think there is absolutely no difference online and, and print-wise? Uh, my only apprehension lies not in the publications and the websites maintained by newspaper organizations, but by the spread of misinformation by people like you and me. For example, we had this instance of uh, Kadar, Kadar Khan's death. It spread like a virus on social media, but uh, on Facebook, but actually he was not dead. He was, he was only critical. So a spread of misinformation can actually can actually be harmful and a little knowledge is always a dangerous thing. Right, I think, uh, I think that's a very good point, a very pertinent point. Uh, little knowledge is very dangerous unless you have complete credible sources where you get it from. Uh, I think your journalism ethic also suffers. You have a point and I'll come to over there after this, yeah. Twitter and Facebook are social networking sites. They can't be treated as news sites. Apps and sites uh, operated by news organiza organizations can be used for news, but not these sites. Right, right. I think that's a very important point. That particular section hasn't spoken yet, but we'll come to that in just a bit. We'll take a small break right now. Before I take a break, I want to raise one question and I want a, a voice vote perhaps, or even a show of hands if you can. Uh, do you consider people who work for purely online organizations, say, crickinfo.com, that's, that's a pretty... Do you consider them journalists? Yes. Yes. All of, all of you do? So you don't have to be uh, affiliated with a media house to be a journalist. Yeah. All right, all right. Uh, we'll take a small break right now. We'll come back and we'll discuss more on the same issue. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. <music> Welcome back to this special edition of Campus Debate. We are talking about the merits and demerits of online journalism versus the more traditional form of print journalism. Who remembers the Sashi Tharoor case when, with the cattle class comment? Everyone does? Yeah. Yes, everyone does. Now, what I want to ask you now is, uh, do you think uh, the spread, the virus-like spread of online media and online journalism has in fact targeted individuals or media houses or organizations, companies, has it made it easier for a public hanging of, a, of, of anyone, of a public figure? Who agrees with that? Has it made it easier? Just one person agrees. Two. Two people agree with me. You don't agree with me. Why don't you agree with me? Why do you think uh, that... Uh, the spread of online media hasn't really made targets out of public figures. See, the time has changed. Uh, in the early days, there never used to be different ideologies or different views about a person coming in. But with the coming of the but online... That's not really and true. That is, if in case, you know, you're talking about print media and the online journalism, you'll find some new websites, some new... Uh, some new news houses or some new online little websites which do have different views or you know different opinion about a person and if in case they are uh, you know disclosing that thing and that doesn't really cr creates a bad effect on on the people or the reader but that does give a different angle to it and you know different angles are required for a story to be covered properly but are you saying that uh, before online journalism was such a rage there were no differing opinions about there were but now the now the scale has increased. Earlier it doesn't used to happen, but now the scale has increased on a lot. 
And you think it's a good thing or a bad thing? It's a very good thing. And, you know, initially, if we, you know, look towards the history, we'll find that print journalism was also condemned mm -hmm. when it started. Mm -hmm. Now is the time for the online journalism. It will be condemned for the next 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. But then people will be with it. Right. Not necessarily condemned, but we can have differing yes, opinions. Different yeah, opinions. absolutely. Uh, and uh, remember when I mentioned the Shaji Tharoor case, why? One, because he had just made a comment and if, if we look back at it in hindsight, if a newspaper had carried that, uh, that uh, same sentence that he had uttered, I don't think there would have been such a hue and cry. Would you agree? If a newspaper had carried that statement, do you think such uh, a vitriol against that man would have happened? No, it wouldn't have happened. So does that give us an idea of how powerful really the online journalism stream now is? Do you, do you think it has surpassed all forms of journalism? Do you think it has, it has the reach that we never used to have before? Do you think that uh, it is the right way to go? It is, it is the right direction to go? And do you think it can be used for bad as well? Uh, we are all talking about the reach. I agree that in the present scenario, it's, it's, the reach has increased but only in urban areas. We are forgetting a major point that even more than 50%, especially talking about India, we live in rural areas and they do not have access to internet. So there, newspaper is like the major role to play uh, in gathering news. Especially vernacular. Yeah, exactly, vernacular press. So uh, in those areas and the areas that do not have access, there, the major news gathering source is the newspapers and the traditional sources. We cannot be talking about online sources there. So do you think online journalism, online media, social media is an urban phenomenon then? Who agrees? Show of hands, please. It's yeah. a completely urban yeah, phenomenon. Yeah, exactly. Okay, fine. I, I take your point. Uh, if it is an urban phenomenon, do you think uh, it is doing a good enough job that it should be spread, that, like she said, rural areas don't have access? Uh, to, to uh, online uh, sources, online portals. Do you think that we need to strive more to make sure that this rage, if I could call it that, that this new form of expression gets to rural areas as well? Do you, do you, do you agree with that? Yeah. Voice vote, please. Yes or no? Yes. yes. Right. What can we really do to make sure that happens? Anyone has any ideas? Yes. The, uh, that side again? Yeah. First you and then you. So the first need is that the betterment of the infrastructure first the infrastructure has to be made that uh, the rural areas people get internet okay and the main problem is electricity so if the rural areas are not having electricity 24 7 then they can't be like access they can't access the internet for the news yes your friend over there yeah, but, uh, infrastructure is the most important, I think. It, it needs to be set up because we have seen the government making attempts by introducing the cash tablet and stuff like that. But there's no necessary infrastructure to run these uh, these tablets and these computing systems. So as long as the infrastructure is not there, these things will be useless for all the rural areas. Other thing could be there that these people could be trained to produce their local content. Now, if for example, Gao Connection is a website which produces, you know, content catering to the rural class, the uh, localized class. So, not a uh, localized approach should be adopted so that they can uh, get information not only about internationally, nationally, but about their area as well. So, you know, it will uh, channelize that uh, positive energy of social media, and uh, you know, the negative would be uh, would not be there. And uh, we will have some positive uh, social media, not negative, as people, you know. Are you are saying people are attacked and stuff like that on social media. I think that's a very pertinent point. I have to applaud you for that. Uh, make infrastructure better. Get the reach out. Get get to uh, not just urban audiences, no urban users, but also the rural parts of the country which don't really have access uh, to such uh, modes of information. My friend over there has a point. Till I get to him, uh, I, I'd like to speak about something else as well. Uh, do you think because? Online popularity is something that's gotten really easily, that's, that, that, that comes to you pretty easily. Do you think it also goes away as easily? Do you think it's not as lasting as, say, more traditional forms uh, of, of following, of... Uh, yes, yes, you. What's your name again? Akshar. Yeah, actually, uh, I agree with your point totally. I mean, uh, print has a shelf life of around 24 hours. You can read it throughout the day, but uh, on online, you are just there for two minutes or probably even less than that. So your attention span is... Yeah, and everyone just, you know, you are replaced by somebody else. Uh, we, 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 have done, we have seen surveys where people say that, you know, uh, on, on online, 
the attention span of the audience is very less as compared to print. It's less, it's, it's even more, it's, it's even it's less even, than TV. Yeah, it's less than TV. I mean, you're not paying attention. You just skim through the headlines and then you just go back and look at uh, some other headlines. So. But do you think that you can glean enough information out of that? Or do you think you're just, you're just skipping the sur you're skimming the surface? Well, actually, when, when you have an option now of going next or forward or you, when you say that to read more, just click on this link, people usually don't do that. They just read the first paragraph, they realize, okay, this is a story, I know how it's going to end, and they just go back and they read it in the newspaper, actually. And that's how half-baked information yeah, you find exactly, across, uh, exactly. across nations as well. Right, uh, I think here's a very impo important point. Uh, if you have a click and forward button next to you, some people will click on it, some people won't. But then, what can result is half-baked dissemination of knowledge. And that's, that's, I think you will agree, it's a very dangerous trend. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to put another question to you. Uh, I'm sure all of you are very active on social uh, media sites and, and Twitter and what have you. Uh, how many of you follow, I don't want to call them celebrities, but public figures? Uh, I think about 60% of you do that. Um, who do you follow? I think most of them. Like I think all the popular people I think I must be following. And also I follow NDTV, Washington Post, all these because I get my news from these sources. Right. But, yeah. but, but do you have you have you foregone using a newspaper now then because you, you follow uh, Washington I Post? I read now? it I read it when I have time. That is on the weekend. I think uh, Sunday newspapers are a very good uh, like I think they have a very good edition. Right. And I think I get the news also in detail and I also enjoy reading it. Do you because think there's more perspective involved if you read an editorial of a newspaper? Yeah. Uh, and do you think there's more perspective and more knowledge that comes across? Yes, I do agree to that. But uh, let's be honest, like on a normal day, uh, if you are reading the newspaper also, you might not read the whole article. Like as he mentioned that we have the option of uh, clicking forward, next, yeah. Yeah, going forward, right? But that's the same in newspaper. Like I agree our attention uh, span has become smaller. But doesn't it also, uh, you know, apply to the newspapers? Right. And when you have time, like when I have a time on Sunday, I read every newspaper and I go through it properly. I get two editions, by the way. Right. So it, it's not like that that we only it just depends on how busy you are right, right. so if you have time you'll read it if you don't have you won't read it. right i think fair fair enough fair enough yes you have a point i'd like to add something that it's not that you know if if i get if i come across an article or a video which i think is very important as a journalist i should you know i should keep it in mind i'll definitely make an effort to forward it to my email id perhaps you know i for, otherwise what do i have to do i have to keep paper cuttings in a long term that's not a feasible idea i'd rather you know email those uh, those those articles or clippings to my email id so that i can you know, make a database of it. And the second point that comes through is, is that, you know, when we're talking about, you know, the, the government should enough, build enough infrastructure. So I would say the government, you know, is, you know, some governments are making a general effort. Like in the UP government, they've given out laptops. So tomorrow, you know, you may see, you know, stud young students writing a blog. So I think that's the way it goes on. I mean, they'll start writing. That's that's the way how online would come up. So I don't think that the government is not doing you know, enough. You're a journalism student? Yes. All right. Yes. Uh, a rebuttal for it? Yes. Go for it. Uh, I... No matter how or what sort of media you have, your day is not complete till the time you get the hold of that newspaper. I mean, in the morning, if there's not the newspaper on your door, you feel like newspaper came here. No matter whether you have information online, on TV, everywhere, through, at least once a day, you're going to read a newspaper. Do you think the, the spread of online media is going to kill the newspaper eventually? The popularity might decrease or increase but accordingly. I mean, it, it won't be killed. I mean, people still, you know, if they want to be, if they want to read the news, if they want to know what's happening around, they're going to go to newspaper. No matter whether they go it to go it at the first or at the last stage, right, they're right. going to go to newspaper. Uh, we'll take another small break. I'll come to you after the break. Uh, after the break, I want to I want to talk about with these fantastic journalism students as well uh, what they really think uh, of the spread of social media. And like my friend uh, here mentioned, he doesn't think newspapers are going to die, uh, but he does think the popularity is going to decrease. I also want to talk about that. I also want to find out if I start twittering tomorrow, how many of them will follow me. Take a break. Come back. Welcome back to this special edition of Campus Debate. Before the break, we were talking about how, uh, how it's very important uh, for uh, rural outreach uh, for online media as well. I want to put another question to my friend over here right now. Do you think that uh, working for, say, an online uh, publication, an online, working for the blogosphere, uh, if you can call it that, do you think uh, it's more conducive? to investigative and impartial journalism rather than working, say, for an established media house or a corporate-backed uh, media house because there is not, not as much censorship and editorship involved uh, online. Um, 
I would agree with the point of censorship being an issue um, in the terms of online media. But I would also like to state a fact that uh, swaying of opinions, and I agree that social media has in the past, like, you know, viral inflammatory content, which maybe is not a good thing. It still does. But Yeah, it still does. Hmm. But the point is that the traditional media also does it in only not in, ex in, an, explicit, in an explicit way, maybe the way online does it. There have been taints and there have been slants and opinion shaping also in the f traditional media and it also continues. We are just maybe like the whole point of credibility and accountability comes. So we accept it in a way where we maybe we shouldn't and we should give a thought to it. But yeah, the whole point of like uh, censorship does come in, but I would feel that if there's an open opinion about it, it would be a more safer environment. Do you think that uh, traditional media, f I mean, more than on online media, gets away with inflammatory content uh, yes, or, or, or I would, such like? Yeah, I would think that ways because, uh, like, like we said, like the recent case where some morphed images were posted online and there was a huge roar and uproar and everything. Similarly, there have been instances in the past where maybe a newspaper or a television news channel has aired such content. But then again, a simple apology maybe does a job and then they get away with it. So what I'm trying to say is that yes, there have been issues in the past, but it, we just can't simply blame it all on the virtual media, virtual world which is existing. It is as much prevalent in the traditional media as well. I think I completely agree with you. Yes, you have a point again. Uh, what's your name? State your name first. Uh, my name is Martin. And I have only one point that uh, it provides a multiple point of view at the same point of time. When we talk about participatory democracy, it is very prevalent form of communication which is not prevalent in the print media as you see. Because as you said, the Narendra Modi case or Sashi Tharoor case, we can have uh, normal people, laymen speaking like me and many other people at the same time. So you're saying it's, it's given a voice to the common man, social media has, yes. right. Uh, yes, yes, uh, you have a point, uh, state your name before you say it. My name is Payal and I would like to add a point of citizen journalism that it is it is the outcome of the online uh, journalism in the present scenario that citizen journalism has crept in. It enables all the citizens uh, to uh, present any story which they think they are not able to put it in the print journalism or uh, or in uh, any uh, side. So they, they feel that uh, they can put it in on any social networking site or any website. So and the world will see it. Like for example, we take a tsunami clip which was uh, given by a person who posted it on BBC and it became viral and he was uh, associated as a uh, um, citizen journalist, right? So I think this is a major merit of online journalism that is that it has enabled the citizens also to do any work. For uh, it. What's your name again? Payal thinks that it has sort of enabled and empowered democracy in a way. Uh, with a voice vote, I want to ask you, say yes or no, do you think uh, the spread of online media and journalism has empowered people and has empowered uh, democracy? Yes, yes. Yes, I think that's a very uh, high majority which thinks that the spread of online uh, uh, journalism, the spread of online media, of uh, various social networking sites has really empowered people uh, to, to raise a voice, to have, has given them a voice which probably and perhaps wouldn't have been possible if you're still stuck with the traditional forms of journalism, be it television or be it print. Now, uh, Anything else that you want to add in this particular debate vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, the merits and demerits of online journalism as compared to uh, uh, traditional media, uh, broadsheets or tabloids? Uh, do you think that, uh, uh, say, online media, like we said before, um, is it, has it become easier for people to become famous because they have a Twitter account? Uh, even if, uh, you know, uh, their 15 days of fame are over, if they take to Twitter, everyone's talking about them. Do you think that's a, that's a worrying trend? Who thinks it's a worrying trend that we're giving far too much importance to people who don't even deserve two minutes of our time? Anyone? Nobody? No, yes. Yes. Uh, if we talk about traditional forms of journalism, they'll give importance to issues and not really people. And they'll give importance to people if it, if it matters. But in social media, Twitter, we have Meena, Veena Malik, we have Rakhi Savant. Exactly my point, not. exactly my point. And yeah. they're getting fame. I mean, bad publicity is publicity, agreed. But then we, it's it's us who are following them. And it's us. So it's, it's we're kind of uh, giving publicity to people who do not really deserve it. Right, right. Uh, I think you, you enumerated my point. Who thinks Kim, Kanda Kim Kardashian is a celebrity? <laughs> Does anyone think Kim Kardashian is a celebrity? Thank God, I think I like this college and I think I like, I like uh, this particular stream of students now. Moving on for a bit to more serious issues now. Um, what, what I really want to know from you before we uh, close the program uh, is that 
in the in the beginning, I asked you how many of you have Twitter accounts. You said almost all of you are on social media. Do you think social media now can be has been used as something that can, like I mentioned, empower democracy, but also take up social issues, issues that nobody talks about, issues that uh, uh, television overlooks, issues that governments overlook, because we have that power under our thumbs right now, uh, on our fingers, on Facebook. Do you think it has been used enough? Uh, to uh, invoke social causes, invoke social issues? Anyone? Yes. yes. Uh, you've spoken quite a bit. You haven't spoken. What's your name? Uh, my name is Shibaji. I'd like to uh, say that uh, on certain online portals, we have, uh, they are, uh, the portals are there, uh, they focus on uh, uh, loyalty, on how much uh, people are uh, participating, how much people are commenting. They actually give awards for that, that uh, someone is a very um, uh, connected person or someone is a very, uh, someone is very good at uh, um, uh, analyzing issues. So what the what, uh, side effect of this analysis is basically that people come to know a lot about social issues, which is not possible in a traditional form. Do you think that has helped? Yes, of, definitely. And do you think it should be done more to raise issues uh, that, that concern not just our country, or not our social causes, but also political causes, also, you know, caste-based issues, something we want to eradicate. Do you think that could be used for it? Yes, it can, because obviously everything hits home. At the end of the day, people are going to realize that what they benefit out of it. Right. Uh, thank you, Shivaji. I think that's a pertinent point. Anyone else who wants to add to that? Yeah, uh, I'll come to you as well. I'd like to say this is an issue which I think is not being taken up by the traditional media or the media at the, at the national level. I'll just go to my Facebook, I'll put it in a status, you know, people might like it, people start commenting. Or, you know, I'll just start a blog, I'll put that issue, put a, put a couple of photographs, that's my way of, of starting it. So, you know, democracy, you know, it gives more right to express yourself. Right, right. I think my friend over here has a point and after that I want to take another voice vote. Uh, basically, my point is that, you know, online is good when you're starting a campaign. I mean, we saw that with the team and Nas Anshan and all the events that have been happening. That I mean, allowed. Yeah, that exactly my point. I mean, you know, we have seen campaigns starting uh, online on the social network, but they are not, you know, sustained. Sustained. They're not sustainable. Why they, is they, that? They die in the middle because people lose interest. I mean, when you launch it, it's on the top feeds. Okay, you get 10 likes, 20 likes. On the next day, you know, you have something else. You have Justin Bieber launching his own video, Justin Timberlake launching his own video. It, it goes down. It goes down the ranking, it goes down the gradings. And suddenly, you have to search it on the Facebook search engine. And mm. that's too much of a task right. for a person who is doing social networking. Right. Uh, yes, you have a point. Exactly. It's so frequent by, I mean, ek, by one another. It's like so... So subtle, one after one is one. So it's people may lose interest. They they go from one side to the another side. But in where I, where I in traditional media, there are different type of news. Right, right. Uh, what's your name again? Vinamrata. Vinamrata. Vinamrata makes a good point as well. Uh, I think. Uh, Various, various opinions that came uh, to the fore today, I think most of them uh, are, are pretty valid. Most of them have a point. Uh, most of them also think that uh, the frequency of, uh, of happenings or events uh, in the online world is far too much, is far too uh, frequent for us to sustain really for a longer time. Uh, what, what we really want uh, from uh, social media. Uh, I think uh, we have time for one more question, I think, and then we close. Um, I think we don't have much time. Our director is telling me that we don't have much time. But I must thank all the students who are here from the Delhi College of uh, Arts and Commerce. I think you should give yourselves a big a round of applause for participating in today's debate uh, and letting us know what you really think uh, of uh, online journalism versus uh, uh, media, uh, traditional forms of media. Uh, We'll have to end the show uh, this, uh, on this particular point. Uh, till next time when we come with another uh, group of students and another group uh, of well-informed students and another debate, uh, this is uh, goodbye for now.